All right, Dr. Matt Davis here at Reform Family Chiropractic in McKinney, Texas. And this is one of my favorite webinars to do. So if you're joining us tonight, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your schedule and to be with us. This is such a privilege. And um, many of you have been looking forward to this as we are getting to talk uh, about raising healthy kids naturally. Uh, you can say I use my hand. So hey, Ricky Bobby. Whoa. Okay. Anyways, uh, I can't wait to get into this with you tonight. So we're gonna have some fun. Let me share my screen and then we're gonna jump right in as uh, we talk about what does it mean to raise healthy kids naturally. So, all right. All right, so you can see all this, then we are going to jump right in. Make sure I'm at the top here. There we go. All right, raising healthy kids naturally. We have seven steps to healthy, happy kids. Now, uh, I'm a dad. First and foremost, this is the job I love most. And uh, I've got three kids, uh, 18, 15, and 13. So no matter what stage in the game you are, Raising healthy kids is became a priority for us very young, and uh, we saw a lot of things that both Corey and I and my wife went through uh, in our health journeys as kids and just saw that maybe there's some things that are different, um, and it really made a huge difference in us. So I want to talk about some different approaches, and I'll talk about the one I grew up under, uh, the one we've moved towards, and where we are now, okay? So this is our journey as well, so this might be your journey. So I want you to choose your guide, and I'm going to walk you through where we've been and how this relates, okay? So there's typically three approaches to pediatric, prenatal, and family health care, okay? You got your traditional medical, which is symptoms, diagnosis, treatment. I grew up in Ontario, California, um, right at the base of the San Bernardino Mountains. Well, all the smog, okay, the air pollutants from Los Angeles, California, would blow with the wonderful Santa Ana winds right up into the foothills of the San Bernardino Mountains. And it would sit there over Upland and Ontario and Riverside and all these wonderful areas in inland Orange County. <clears throat> By the time from, I lived there from I was three till I was in fifth grade. So um, I do not remember a year in my life of not having strep throat, of not having what they call tonsillitis um, or having respiratory issues. Uh, I must have taken uh, so many I think if I remember correctly, and I talked to my parents about this, but probably between three to four rounds per year. So I'll let you do the math. So from three years old to fifth grade. Okay. So we're talking like literally probably just shy of 20 rounds of antibiotics uh, just before I was even into adolescence. So can you imagine what my gut biome was like? Okay. Uh, and it just kept happening. And we just were told, Hey, this is what it is. So the symptom was, you know, the red white sacks, the back of the throat, sore throat, fever, feeling horrible, uh, diagnosis, strep swab, take you into the ER, give you amoxicillin back then that's your treatment. Okay. So that's traditional medicine. So no matter what you're walking through, that is kind of the approach. Symptom, diagnosis, treatment. Nothing wrong with that, right? Symptom, diagnosis, treatment. Okay. So there's another guide that we can look at too. There's the natural or nutritional, also known as that functional integrative. Okay. And what that is, is we're still a traditional medical doctor who is asking some questions functionally uh, or integrative, meaning there's multiple practitioners working together. So you go see your pediatrician and then you go see, you maybe they have a um, massage therapist, uh, maybe they have a counselor on stage, you know, or maybe a nutritionist. And they're all working together uh, to try and get to this solution or once again still working towards a symptom diagnosed treatment but trying to do it a little more naturally okay so this has uh, become very popular when we talk about functional medicine they typically start with a whole function is more of a holistic approach which we love okay um, and then they're integrating other practitioners working together to make sure they're all getting to that uh what is the the symptom and then what is a diagnosis and then providing a treatment from each of their specialties okay the next one is a neurological or subluxation centered chiropractic focus, okay? And we're gonna really dive deep into that as we move along, but the neurological part really stuck to me as we started traditional as kids, 
uh, moved into that natural functional. Uh, and then I, before I was ever a chiropractor, went to chiropractors because I started to understand the body is self-healing and self-regulating. Everything works from top down, bottom up. Right. So everything is coming down, top down, inside out. Sorry. And that's what that's that idea of ADIO. OK, above, down, inside out. And so when I started seeing that that's how healing really works for our bodies, it started to change the way I viewed health and also gave me something that I never really understood before was the concept of the nervous system, the central nervous system, which regulates everything. OK, so. It is the big boss I mean, you know, to make sure everything is functioning at its full power. It is the master control switch. It handles everything. That's the brain, the spinal cord working together. This means every nerve in the body is connected okay, to an organ, to a tissue, to a cell. It is literally gaining information instantly sending to the brain, brain is sending it back. So the nervous system is the big boss, all right? Ha, ah, wow. And it is literally trying to work at its full potential. Uh, and power at all times, all right? So the next part that we wanna really talk about in raising healthy kids naturally is our core four, as I said, the nervous system is king. And the second part is this movement is life for babies, kids, and all this. And we see this first of all in babies. So whenever someone is really concerned about the baby, what is the first thing? He's not rolling over. He's not lifting his head. He's not moving, okay? Those are motor delays, okay? We see some of that even beforehand with tongue tie or, um, um, you know, a tongue tie or uh, a failure to, to respond or track, or we see low APGAR scores. Okay. But movement is life. So when we are moving, what's happening? The brain is engaging. The brain is working at its fullest potential. Okay. And that is what we want for all of us, especially for our kids. The next of this core four is sleep. It is everything. You cannot get too much sleep. And I know you already know this, but you really can't because most of us are so sleep deprived already and we drink wonderful things like Starbucks. Yes, I know. I know. I've got an addiction. I'm working on it. I'm in a 12-step program right now to get through that. Um, but one of the things that we know is that when we aren't getting sleep because we are tired and when we're tired, we're medicating with things like Starbucks or other things. Um, and we do this for our kids as well. And now there's more and more products that are like super kid friendly, like Prime and you name like Celsius and different things like this that no one, you know, you should put a Red Bull in a kid's hand. Everyone thinks you're the worst parent in the world. But you put something like Prime in their hands. You're like, oh, yeah, you're the cool hip parent. All right. And the fourth part of this core four is live clean. OK, and we're going to talk about kids and chemicals. They just don't mix together. All right. Now. Let's talk about steps one through three, okay? This is what really matters as we're looking at the central nervous system, we're looking at the brain and body. Um, there's three steps, and this is, begins with babies, first and foremost, is this. Eat, sleep, poop, repeat, okay? You eat, you sleep to recover, and then you poop to get it out. So that filtration, elimination is part of our body. Sleep is recovery, regeneration. Eat is our energy, okay? So let's. I want to take you a little bit deeper into the central nervous system. Um, I love this part because it really helps us understand how our body works. So C1, the atlas, is the boss of the CNS and the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic, as you know, means just automatic things that are happening in our body. So when the autonomic nervous system is working right, it's taking care of your breathing, your heart rate, it's taking care of digestion, it's taking care of your nose and throat. It, all these things you don't think about are happening, okay? You can't process this. It has to happen on its own. Your body would be overwhelmed. The next part of this is axis, which is also known as C2. And this is the connector coordinator and communicator for the central nervous system because it sits right there on that brain stem, all right? Now, my favorite is cranial nerve 10, also known as the vagus nerve, okay? It is really the all things nerve. It also means vagabond because it goes throughout so much of the body and it really is the brake pedal for the body. This is what puts us into that fight or flight or rest and digest. It is really, it serves multiple purposes, but the, there is a huge parasympathetic arrest and digest and recover aspect to the vagus nerve. It really even controls how the gut motility is working, okay? Um, it, it is one of my favorites and it's an amazing nerve to study and you'll be blown away by all the research that's out there and they're trying everywhere you go. Even on YouTube, TikTok, you're gonna find something about vagal nerve stimulation or hacks, okay? Now, T6, all right, I want to talk about T6. Uh, this is thoracic six, sixth vertebrae, and the nerves that are coming out of there. This is the chopper upper region. 
Um, those of you that grew up near farms, you know what I'm talking about, the chopper upper, okay? It's going through the field. And what it's doing is it's breaking everything up, all right? Yes, I know, I know, I know. You're thinking, what is that called? Because that's what I'm doing right now. I can't think of it right now. I have farmers in my family all over the place and I can't think of it. I know a combine is going to bring everything in and harvest everything and it chops it up and it takes out the good and spits out the chaff. So T6 is that chopper up region. So going a little farther down, right underneath your ribs right there, you've got T12, which is the sorting and warehousing region. These are all the glands and organs in the area that are really deciding where things go. Where do we need to keep our energy? Uh, this is what we're doing all the time. This is how eat, sleep, poop, repeat is happening, okay? And then S2 is that poop button. That's the region where at uh, lower digestion, the final stages where everything's being pushed out and the body is being told, hey, got to get this out, okay? Don't want this toxic stuff in here anymore. I've got everything I need. It's all yours. Put it back in the landfill. All right. So you guys start to understand that the nervous system is the big boss. It's working hand in glove with the brain to make sure everything is working, okay? And if we get deep into this, whenever we have an issue with a kid, eat is the first thing I'm looking at. What's going, how are they sleeping? Are they recovering, okay? And then how are they pooping? How often is it hard, soft, what color? We, we're going to go into all this stuff. We talk about poop a lot. Um, we talk about sleep a lot. And then we also talk about food a lot, okay? I want to pause here for a second. There is a lot of judgment that comes with eating. And I know it's hard, mom and dads. I do. I know it's hard, okay? And I want to be real honest with you. I mean, do we eat 100% clean in our house? No. There has been some Trader Joe's uh, rice, uh, uh, fried rice and sweet and sour chicken. Uh, uh, you know, this probably happens a little too often in our house. And why does that happen? It's because mom and dad get overwhelmed. Uh, we don't allow enough time in our day and we get to a place where we need something to feed our family before it's eight o'clock. Now, my kids are older now, so they're getting um, they're they're older now. So they're, they're getting home later and we have more activities that require them to be out later. So many times getting dinner all together is very hard. So but when our kids were really little and I think this is why our kids have done so well, at least in these three categories, eat, sleep and poop. We battled when our kids were to provide and make almost 95 percent of food, our biggest thing that we did when our kids were little is we did pizza on Friday nights. And uh, I love to say that was all homemade, wonderful, organic sourdough bread uh, crust that was, you know, cooked over open hearth fire. No, we are doing that now, but we weren't then. But the rest of the week, every meal was homemade. My wife was a boss when it came to that kind of stuff. She was amazing and really did an incredible job. And I watched how those fruits and vegetables and nuts and oils and the good proteins just really built this huge base, which then allowed our kids to sleep really well and poop really well, and repeat really well. So I'm very fortunate because that's prevented a lot of things. So as we walk through the stress now of raising teenagers, um, you know, we are really able to kick the sick pretty quick at our house. So step four is this. When we talk about eat, sleep, and poop, right? We want to move to step four, which is how do we prepare to kick the sick? And I want to cover these two things. Not all exposure to germs, germs and bacteria is inherently bad. Dr. Josh Axe, if you're not following him, you should. He's an amazing man, uh, loves the Lord, great guy, great scientist, great doctor, uh, and has the Growth Lab is his new podcast, which is just phenomenal. But here what is. It says not all exposure to germs is inherently bad. We need to be exposed to germs, quote unquote, or bacteria as they are, okay? Fever is an overall beneficial process for the host, okay? So when we talk about kicking the sick or uh, being prepared for this, there's two things that are taking place. Okay, um, fever is one of the most important things for fighting infectious disease in our body. Because what happens? Fever literally creates a temperature, a body temperature is raised and it changes a fancy word, homeostasis condition. So the, the bacteria or virus is uncomfortable. It, it literally creates a place. Um, it serves like the body autoclave, which is designed to kill everything, okay? Nothing will live in high, high heat, especially if it's a bacteria. Now, there's some exceptions. I know these other science folks out there would look at that, but here's what's happened. When we don't get that exposure to good bacteria, then our body is not able to fight off or know and understand when a foreign invader is in and what to do with it. But when it does come in, our body is supposed to get run down. It's supposed to get, and when it does get quote unquote sick, it literally is capturing, slowing you down, 
allowing your body to heat up and to rest to be able to take this bacteria or virus into your system and get it out. So that's what a cough is doing. It is literally, a cough is one of the most common symptoms and we seek help for it so quickly when really it is, it's, it's a defense reflex for the body that enhances your body's ability to clear out these secretions and particles that are in our system. It's supposed to, we want a productive cough. We want to get those chunky monkeys out of us, okay? I know, but when we suppress things with fever, with, uh, with um, you know, say with Advil or aspirin, or when we suppress a cough with whatever over-the-counter choice you make, we're really inhibiting the body's ability to adapt. It's supposed to do that. It's supposed to get it out. It's your body's way of saying, hey, rest and recover. You're worn out. You're tired. Your immune system needs to step back. I'm not, I don't know about this bacteria. I haven't incurred this virus before. Hey, we're going to get here. So, and, and Dr. Josh's book uh, here, Eat Dirt, one of the big things he talks about is leaky gut and how it may be the root cause. And we can get that on another talk because there's just so much there. But it's basically how the gut lining becomes very permeable. And what's happening is then is we're not filtering through our gut. And these, these bacteria are literally getting into our system. And our body is literally fighting with it itself. And it's not able to recover well, okay? So remember, fever is good. Cough is good. And these are things that will help change the way we raise our kids. Because we sometimes freak out. We run to the pe I love pediatricians. I have some great friends that are pediatricians, okay? But we don't have to run to them for everything. Our body was created to be self-healing and self-regulating. There's so many things it just needs to do. We just need to slow down and rest. Okay. Now, I want to head you to that third way. We have symptoms. We have diagnosis, treatment. We approach that from more of either a more natural or holistic approach or the, you know, the, um, you know, multiple practitioners working together, or you go to your traditional uh, pediatric or family doctor, okay? And they're never going to talk about this. And this is what we've seen more and more as we talk about leaky gut. And one of the things we've seen is this connection between the vagus nerve and that innervation, innervation, innervation which is another word for connection uh, of the gut and the immune system, okay? So when there is a interference, it's really the root cause, because when there's interference in communication, if I go like this, you're not going to watch very long, okay? Unless you still love wearing a mask, but that's a whole different issue. A little interference here with some water. Mm. The real root cause is interference. Because when there's interference in that connection of the information that travels from our brain through the vagus nerve to the gut and back. So it's brain, gut, brain, okay? When that cycle is interfered with, that's when we start seeing the state of dis-ease. That's when we start seeing our system is not working well. We start seeing our immunity drop. So when we see interference, the next step is we see imbalance. So that's what we're talking about, an imbalance in our immunity, imbalance in our ability to handle adaptive stress, which then when there's imbalance, we start seeing inflammation. So we start seeing tissue inflamed. We start seeing glands inflamed. And this is our body's way of saying, hey, too much. I need to rest. I need to recover. I need to get back on track. So if you get a chance, take a look at these articles. They're phenomenal. Okay. Um, the group I'm part of, the pediatric experience, we talk a lot about this and how these three things, interference, imbalance, and inflammation are really holding back so many kiddos and families because they're thinking symptom, diagnosis, treatment. What if we look for just the interference? What is the root cause? What is at the heart of this? And, and that's when we start seeing the nervous system start to play in, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit more of it, but I want to just talk about a na nature's medicine cabinet, okay? There's so many great things that you can have. I absolutely love, 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 love honey. Honey is just an amazing thing to have. And if you reach out to us, we have a wonderful spreadsheet, a little a giveaway on this that tells you all these wonderful things to put in there that you can have at home. Uh, colloidal silver is a phenomenal tool to have. Um, local, local honey, okay? Really, really good. Uh, calendula salve, uh, really healing. Oh, many things you can all make at home. Um, so many great syrups that you can do, okay? Uh, elderberry syrup, boost the nervous system. Um, you know, we can go on and on in this, but stock up and have this natural medicine cabinet because when you get a cough and you do want to help the body relax, not suppress, relax, honey works great. 
Uh, it's also naturally antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. So there's some really powerful things here. Obviously, vitamin C, zinc, um, EPA and DHA, which are fish oils. But most of us are short in magnesium and zinc uh, and vitamin C and vitamin D when we start seeing the season. So as we're heading into spring, which we're seeing here in Texas, which is weird because we were like... 40 degrees, then we were 90 degrees, and then it snowed in my house last night. And yeah, I, I don't really understand what's going on. But so stock up on nature's medicine cabinet. Get the natural stuff. Get the stuff that's food-based. You want us to understand that, okay? So the step six that I want to talk about in raising healthy kids naturally is understand and prevent that perfect storm, okay? Or work to reverse it because it's probably already stuck. And we talk about this a lot, the, the factor of, of Thomas Troxon's and thoughts, Okay. So we see that play out in so many ways. So for us, this perfect storm begins for many families with fertility and pregnancy stress, okay? Then it's only made worse by a medical intervention at labor and delivery. So whether that's C-section, epidural, whether that's vacuum extraction or forceps, uh, or just the, you know, unfortunately the emergency session, which a lot of times is caused because of all the stress or heart rate monitor. Um, there's just so many things that are there more for CYA for the hospital and the doctor than they are for the benefit of the mom. Okay. Um, we had all three of our kids at home and I know firsthand when and where there needs to be an intervention, but I'll tell you what, it's very, very rare. But yet now it's become normal uh, when it's not. It's become very common. It's not normal. So then what happens after a lot of times these labor and deliveries, there's been stress, there's been an intervention. We start seeing a pattern uh, of lip tie, tongue tie. We start not latching. We start seeing a colicky baby. We start seeing neuromotor challenges. These are all the soft signs of underdevelopment, lack of movement, uh, not arching, not lifting the head. Uh, not wanting to engage or holding their head to one side. And what does that relate to? So a colicky baby usually is not dealing with gut issues. They're dealing with upper cervical issues because they've been activated by a medical intervention. So then if we stay in this state of stress, right, we stay in this perfect storm as building, then we have this constantly sick, runny nose all the time, ear infection, strep throat, cycle after cycle, quote unquote allergies kicking in, Okay. And then you see this challenging tiger whose behavior is starting to shift. And that's why we have the terrible twos, okay? Because we have a kid that's really sulexated and stressed out. So then we start seeing more of these soft signs of those neuromoral challenges. Lack of balance, coordination, like I said, ear infections repeatedly. Uh, getting the same cough every year. How is that even possible, okay? Well, if this maintains and we stay in a state of sensory overload and if our body stays in this place of stress, then we start seeing this pattern of over sensory issues starting to develop as they head into grade school. And even spectrum issues can develop out of this. So you're seeing a stuck kid who, you know, with or without a diagnosis doesn't matter, but this perfect storm has been brewing because now we, we, we have antibiotics have been given to this kid all throughout these stages here. Uh, we see a poor diet. We see, uh, man, all kinds of medications and then environmental toxins are overwhelming this kid, which then leads them into this next stage where then we start seeing the fear and anxiety. We start seeing the uh, busy lifestyle or in their tech overload. I have literally have a kid in my practice who already has the old man hug from watching his phone so much. It's crazy. I know. How do we not have it? I, I don't know. I mean, it's because one of the things is it's not innate to our generation. It's not innate to us as parents. Um, and if you are a young parent where all you know is your phone is, you know, then we can talk about some other things you can do there. But then what we see is this behavior kicking in of this storm where this kid is exhausted, angry, anxious, depressed teenager. And then I see all these burnt out, stressed out, anxious ADHD moms and dads. It's not genetic. Okay. It's not. Um, it has a lot to do with all these factors together. And when we look at ADHD and ADD and sensory issues, there is no test you take. There is only a survey you walk through to identify repetitive issues. And I think a lot of it can be attributed to personality. Um, there is some genetic pieces of the family and how their persona is, right? Okay. Um, but a majority of it's coming from this root cause where the nervous system is put into fight or flight from the get-go and they've never done anything about it. 
So Harvard's developing child does an incredible study and they talk about the interactions of the genes and experiences and how they shape the brain. So when there's an earlier often trauma, whether it's physical, chemical, or emotional, it really just creates and reinforces these uh, circuits in the brain. And then they are reinforced by repeated use. So if your kid is in fight or flight early and often, then, and they stay there, they're really creating a pathway. And then this, this affects us how they think, how they feel, and how they interact. And they're entwined throughout their life. So it's not going to go away. And we know for a fact that toxic stress affects the neural connections or the architecture of the brain. So these neurons are like this. And there's less of them than how it should be as they should all be overlapping and interconnecting and sending one image, you know, one uh, message to another, which can lead to lifelong problems in learning, behavior, and physical and mental health. So as a neurologically focused chiropractor, what I'm looking for is where stress is stuck on. There's more gas than brake pedal. And we call that, that parasympathetic is the brake pedal, but the gas pedal is the sympathetic. That's the fight or flight. That means when the stress is stuck on because of trauma, toxins or thoughts or chemical, physical, emotional stress, then the body is literally overwhelmed and cannot shut down. So step seven, that's why I wanted to come back here uh, is because we want to talk about how movement matters more than anything else because the brain is built from the bottom up backwards forward over time. So we can go through all these milestones, but that number one is motor and the motor development of a kiddo. Okay. And we got this wonderful milestones of locomotion here. Um, when they start walking, I, I love this. Okay. So in that two months, we start seeing them prone, they're lifting up, you know, they roll over right there at two months. And then right around four months, you start seeing their, um, you know, um, they put their weights on their legs. They're starting to push up. You know, they're rolling over from side to side. They start standing up and toddling around about six months. And then by eight months, you know, they, they pull up and want to stand. And they're starting to walk around 10 to 12 months. Or they'll stand on their own. And they'll just kind of look for you to watch them. So then they start walking, you know. And then from then on, it's just out of control. But what we see is that motor development. If any of these steps are skipped or they're because they're in stress or they're in stress. There's, a, there's my own life. If they're in stress... That motor development gets skipped, which then affects what? There's a direct connection between gut because they're not putting, peeing and pooping. They're not getting things out of that system, which creates a toxic load, which then affects the what? The immune system. So if that gut is not responding, and that's a big part of our immune system. And then there's a direct correlation between immune gut issues. And then we start seeing speech, which if you are not speaking well or can't finish your words, then you're starting to deal with social then there's the acting out, which leads to behavioral, which is then housing, how they interact with other people. Uh, and then that leads to that emotional response or they're, they're, they're no longer, they're stuck in that amygdala part of their brain and they're living out of this hyper emotional response. Okay. I know. Ah, wow. So we've covered those seven steps and there's just so much here, but there's extra essential credit that I want to give you on this. It says our kids don't do as we say they do as we do. So the model for good health for kids that we all know exactly how to go out and get it for themselves and their children as well. So when you live out this model of good health, when you're getting care, and I am very a huge advocate for family health care, specifically through chiropractic to get that nervous system on stuck. Measuring your HRV tells you where your stress level is. Are you in fight or flight or rest and digest? But when you take the time to live this out yourself, because not doing as I do, as I say, not as I do, it's really detrimental because kids model it. I find so many times my kids hold me accountable because I grew up in a fast food household. I grew up in a, a, a place where the big dinner out was going to McDonald's. Um, we didn't have a lot of money as kids. So those seem like those greatest things. Um, but I paid the price later in life with chronic fatigue syndrome. I paid the price with, you know, always able to getting sick and getting this deep, nasty cough every winter uh, for as long as I could remember until I took charge of my health right around my junior year of college when I started getting uh, working with a chiropractor who turned my health around. And that began this journey for me. And my next big step was my wife, who is even healthier than I am, really kind of pushed me to a new level and started calling out on the lifestyle choices that I was making. And then everything went to the highest level when I started working with chiropractors when I lived in San Diego to get my brain and body working together. When I saw that, saw what I was doing, I said, I got to do this for other people. So just know this, you're doing good. But when you look at the things that you're doing, when you look at those pieces, where are you missing it? Where are the things that you're struggling with? And that's what we want to walk with you in. 
you know, this raising kids healthy and naturally, you know, I want to, I want to just go back real quick because I think it's just so important to remember it starts with that eat, sleep and poop, you know, look at what's going on. You know, the food you feed your kid matters, getting that good exposure outside, looking for that real interference. What is that root cause for them? Having some natural things that'll take care of them, but understanding that perfect storm and when you get stuck in it, or if you're already in it, what you can do to reverse it. And we talk about removing the stress neurologically through specific chiropractic care to get the nervous system back on track. So we can utilize movement through exercise and for our kids, it matters, but for us as well. So what do you want to walk away with today? Okay. Um, I really want to just give you those seven steps. I really want to encourage you that the more information you know, you're going to have a greater ability to teach that to your kids and live it up. So get an additional guide if you need it. And we want to be that for you. Okay. Follow those seven steps outlined here. You don't just consistently not perfect. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, and then get your family scanned. And if you aren't already under care somewhere, find out how that nervous system is working. Find out where that interference is. And that's what we do in our office is we look for that nervous system interference. We look to see through HRV, uh, EMG, electromyography, okay, uh, and then thermography to see how their temperature measures the depth, how the uh, EMG measures the tension and the energy and the efficiency of the system, and the heart rate variability measures, are you in fight or flight or rest and adjust? Well, are you in uh, sympathetic overload or parasympathetic dominance? Where are you at? So that's my suggestion for you. If you need any tips on building that medicine cabinet, please reach out to us. We'd love to give you more stuff. Um, and, and really kind of help you think of what you can do first and naturally in raising your kids. So get outside, watch some sunrises with your kids. It will help them sleep. Watch that sunset will also help them sleep. Uh, avoid this as much as you can for seven o'clock. And if you have to put these things on with some blue blockers like I do. Uh, so I, if I have to work and do things later in the evening, uh, then my eyes are protected um, and I get that chance to recover. So Know that we're thinking about you. We really, really appreciate being a part of your lives. Um, it means the world to us at Reformed Family Chiropractic to, to walk with you all, okay? So just letting you know that we are glad to be here. If there's anything else that we can do to help you all in your journey, um, let us know and reach out to us. Come get scanned. And if you're watching this video, Okay, I'm going to make a special offer to you. So you have to say, I saw it in the video and I heard Dr. Matt say it with his wonderful blue blocking glasses on that he should be wearing most of the day now, but he's too prideful to do it all the time. Let me draw some more water to take care of my pride. Normally, our scans and initial exam is 150 per person. Um, but if you want to bring your family in to get scanned, we'll take care of your whole family for $199. And that's a scan. It's day one, day two. It helps you understand what's going on with their nervous system. It helps you see where you might need some help. We'll walk through the seven steps together to see what we can do more of um, and how we can help you and support you. We always want to meet you where you're at now. Okay. I want to meet you where you are now. We don't want to stay there. God talks to us a lot about that. He meets us where we are now. He doesn't want to leave us there. He wants to take us and grows us uh, to be more in his image. And I want to do the same thing. I want to see your fullest function for you and your family. All right. So I'm Dr. Matt Davis at Reformed Family Chiropractic. Thanks for being with me tonight as we work together to raise healthy kids naturally.